Again, good morning, everyone, and welcome from my side. Thank you, Yurovin, for creating this platform and giving us an opportunity to talk on a very important topic about construction features of hygienic air handling units and ultraviolet lamps. I'm sure the audience would have got a brief idea about the difference between the standard air handling units and hygienic air handling units and their important certifications in the last webinar, which held on 9th of September by Eurovent. Today, we are going to cover the construction features of hygiene air handling units and their major components. As you're aware, the most important standard for hygiene air handling units are Eurovent, VDI 6022 part one, DIN 1946 part four. And we will cover the construction and the major components of hygienic air handling units like casing, fan, heat exchangers, mechanical filters, covering these important standards, as well as the ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, their function and applications. Let's start with the casing. As per the 1946 part four standard, the floor panels for the casing should be made of stainless steel or aluminium as the floor panels are in contact with water, so there should not be any corrosion. However, the side and the roof panels can be made of galvanized with coating. The internal wall surface should be smooth without any grooves and recesses. The profile and the panels should be flush with each other so that it is very easy to remove any dust accumulated on the surface. The hardware and the fasteners should be made of stainless steel. There should not be any screws used inside the air path. Hence, the construction should be of screwless panel construction, or it is also called as snap fix panel construction. But there will be some blank off between the sections inside the A-tubes, which requires to have screws. This screws should not be of Phillips head, which has a groove on his head, as the chances of dust accumulation is more. Hence, the hexagonal head screws with no grooves on their head should be used. The gaskets and the nylon parts and the ceilings should comply with microbial inertness certified in accordance with ISO 846 standard. Gaskets and ceilings shall be of closed cell materials and shall not absorb any moisture. Stickable gaskets are not allowed. It should be removed removal type. Seals shall not emit any odors or harmful substances. To ensure the hygiene requirements are met, the casing height less than or equal to 0.8 meter shall have removable access panel and for the casing with the clear height of less than or equal to 1.6 meter, the A2 component shall have access upstream and downstream to be easily removable type. Fans. Until uh, 2018, uh, the DREW fans were used for hygienic air handling units. But now, DREW bell driven fans are not permissible for hygiene air handling units. Only plug type fans can be used. Fans without spiral casing should be used. The entire fan unit, including the base frame of sheet steel and sectional steel, shall be protected from corrosion. All the impellers shall be galvanized, but with coating. Heat exchangers. This is the most uh, critical component in the air handling unit, which is also called as the wet section. The construction of the coil heat exchanger, the heat exchanger should be such that the end plates and the drain pan should be made of stainless steel of or of any 
non-ferrous material. The depth of the cooling coil shall not exceed 300 mm. Heat exchangers should be designed so that they can easily be cleaned and disinfected. For hygiene reason, thorough cleaning shall be ensured from upstream to downstream. The, the heat exchanger construction should be such that the copper tube and aluminum fins is allowed, but in case the coating is required, it has to be VOC free complying to microbial inertness and abrasion resistant. Droplet eliminator should be used to ensure the water droplets does not enter any downstream components. They shall be made of corrosion resistant material. Nylon material is permissible if complying to ISO 846 standard or stainless steel should be used. The eliminator should be constructed in such a way that the fins of the casing can be re removed for cleaning purposes. The fin concentration for the heat exchanger should not exceed 12 fins per inch. Drain pan. The drain pan again is a part of the wet section and is also a very important component. The material of the drain pan should be of stainless steel. The drain pan construction should be designed to completely drain 5 liters of water per square meter within 10 minutes without any stagnation of the water in the drain pan. The drain pipe should be of minimum 40 mm in diameter to ensure that there is a free flow of the water without any stagnation. Mechanical filters. The filter classes shall be in accordance to DIN EN ISO 16890 standard. As per these standards, the first stage of filtration shall be of ISO EPM1 greater or equal to 50%, which is also called as F7 grade. And the second stage of filtration shall be of ISO EPM1 greater or equal to 80% which is also known as F9 grade. And the third stage of filtration should be HEPA filter, minimum H13. As per the hygienic standards, there are different types of rooms classified as class one, class two, depending on the areas in the hospital. For class two, two stage filtration is required, but for class one rooms, three stage is a must. The location of the filter is also very important. Hence, the second stage of filtration should be after the fan section. Filter removal is of two types, front loading arrangement and the side loading arrangement. Front loading is good to achieve the filter bypass leakage of F9 as per DIN EN 1886 standard, which confirms only 0.5% of the leakage out of the total air volume. Pressure differential manometer is mandatory for each stage of filtration. That completes my first topic and let's go to the ultraviolet germicidal irradiation. The sun produces specific UV wavelengths that destroy and deactivate biological and chemical contaminants. On the right hand side, you will see the electromagnetic spectrum with different wavelengths. This spectrum describes all kinds of lights, including those the human eyes cannot see. The light we can see made of individual colors is only the visible light. The other type of lights are ultraviolet, X-rays, and infrared. In ultraviolet, there are four types of UV with the different wavelengths. UVA is between 315 to 400 nanometer. UVB is between 280 to 315 nanometer wavelength. UVC is between 200 to 280 nanometer. And UVV is between 100 and 200 nanometer wavelength. Let me tell you, ozone 
it's produced only below 200 nanometer. So above 200 nanometer, the ozone is not produced. The UVC energy, it alters the DNA of the microorganisms, prevent them from reproducing. And as per ASHRAE, UVC of 253.7 nanometer, generally referred as 254 nanometer, we can achieve the optimal germicidal strength to disinfect the fungi, mold, and viruses. To have an effective UV irradiation, there are three important factors, the location of the UV lamps, the dwell time, and the air velocity. Let's look at the application of the UV lamps. It is used for surface and air disinfection. We commonly use UV lamps for disinfecting the cooling coil inside the air handling units. Question, whether the UV lamp should be placed before the coil or it should be after, which is also known as upstream or downstream. The temperature before the cooling coil is higher, hence the UV dosage, the number of lamps and the power consumption requires is less compared to the downstream. But when you place the cooling coil, when you place the UV lamps after the cooling coil, the temperature is lower and hence the UV dosage, the number of lamps and the power consumption required is more. As per ASHRAE, it is recommended to place the UV lamps downstream of the evaporator coil because it will disinfect the drain pan as well. When we use UV lamps for disinfecting the cooling coil, it reduces the pressure drop across the coil and increases the life and the efficiency of the cooling coil. Now, there are many questions like whether we can do the air disinfection inside the air handling units. Yes, it is possible because you need to design the UV lamps based on the intensity of 1200 microwatts second per centimeter square at 2.5 meters per second, which is the velocity of the coil, the same velocity, to disinfect the influenza A virus to 90% and the SARS virus to 99%. However, the air disinfection is generally is happening inside the duct because in the duct, you place the UV lamps parallel to the airflow and you will get a good dwell and the contact time between the air and the UV lamps when you're placing parallel to the airflow. But the right number, right UV dosage, the number of lamps and the power consumption should be selected accordingly when you are disinfecting the air inside the duct. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Narasita. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Luna. Yes. Uh, please switch to your last slide so that the people also see your contact details. Yes. For everyone, of course, uh, uh, please also use the opportunity to reach out directly to all speakers if you have further questions. I have uh, one question to you, Lubna. Is, uh, you said you, uh, you are looking for a very uh, defined wavelength uh, when we talk about UV components for disinfection of the air. Uh, 254 yes. uh, nanometers. Now, the question if to, for me is how do you make sure that the lamps are delivering exactly this wavelength? Is there a, an independent certification for that in place, or is it really where we have to rely on the on the manufacturers of these devices? Yes, there are independent uh, certifications as well as the UV manufacturers. They have their own softwares, uh, which is tested and uh, they can you know so they can you know you can find out like what is the wavelength use what is the intensity use and you can see whether you know what intensity is used should which which you can disinfect the cooling coil